Good morning. Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd here in Lexington, Kentucky. And happy Easter. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. A couple of notes on this service before we proceed. First off, on the hour, which I think we're right there, we will ring the church bells along with all the other churches in Kentucky. You'll hear our church bell ringing outside, and my man Emery has a bell to ring inside too. And the ringing of the bells is our move of solidarity with all who are suffering in this current age of the shadows of the virus. The bells remind us that our hope will never be dim. Our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, we sing forever and ever. Amen. We'll have two hymns in today's service. We'll begin with hymn 180. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth stanzas of hymn 180. And if you have a hymnal at home, then of course you can sing along using your hymnal. Emory will also be embedding the text of each of our two hymns in the Facebook feed, so you can follow along there. For safety's sake, those of us who are here in this live service this morning will not be singing together on your screen. We'll be off screen so we can be a good distance apart singing along with you. We'll process into the space and have our Easter service. The Easter service will begin on page 355 in your books of common prayer. When we get to communion, I hope you'll remember that while I am not proposing to consecrate the elements that you have there in your home, the bread and the wine or juice, whatever it is, we are, some of us, taking a bit of bread or cracker in our homes as a way to practice spiritual communion, understanding that God's blessing rests upon all creation, and until we can be together again at this table, we'll do things in a simple way. I have a special spiritual communion prayer to read out when we get to the distribution of the bread and the wine this morning, and I think that we're going to be able to put that prayer on your screen as well for those of you who would like to pray that prayer, whether you take the piece of bread at home or not. We'll end with hymn 207. Again, we'll put the text on your screen. We'll sing stanzas 1, 2, 3, and 4 of our final hymn. The Paschal candle this morning, brand new for this day, was given by Helen Bradley, beloved member of our parish, in memory of God's beloved Harvey D. Bradley. So we'll begin in just a moment. It's good for us to be together even in this way. Happy Easter, dear ones. Happy Easter. Hymn 180.
service continues on page 355 in your Books of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we praise you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 118, found on page 760 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will say it in unison, verses 1 through 2, and then 14 through 24. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His, His mercy, mercy endures forever. Let, Let Israel, Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory 
in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has has become become the chief cornerstone. This This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On On this day the Lord Lord has acted. We we will rejoice and be glad. The second lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Praise to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed.
So the Gospel says that when Jesus died, the Gospel says that when Jesus died, there was an earthquake. Hmm? Now one little boy in our parish, when he heard that detail in the story on Monday, Thursday, turned to his mother as he was watching there on the screen at home, and he said, Mama, did Jesus die in an earthquake? It's a good question. The text says there was an earthquake. Did Jesus die in an earthquake? I would say, yes. I would say on the day that Jesus died, the whole earth shook. Everything crumbled. Everything crumbled and fell apart. Jesus died in the midst of it. So, yes, little one. Astute listener you are, Jesus died in an earthquake, and all was left in ruins. The story goes on, right? On the third day, Jesus' friends were walking through the rubble and the mess left after the earthquake. You ever walk through the rubble and the mess after a big storm? Maybe you've been where there's been a hurricane or a tornado or, or an earthquake. You walk through the rubble, don't you? Looking for what might have lived through it, what might be salvaged. Well, on the third day, Jesus' friends were walking through the rubble, and there was another earthquake. Well, that's what the Gospel text says about Easter Day. There was another earthquake. And as Father John read so beautifully, Jesus' friends, when the earth shook, trembled, and they shook with fear and joy. And when the earth stopped shaking, the friends of Jesus discovered the one thing. The one thing still alive in the midst of all the rubble, destruction, and mess. And the one thing was love. Was love embodied in the body of the risen Jesus Christ. The one thing. So it's Easter in the age of the coronavirus, and the earth is quaking, shaking, isn't it? And there's one thing. Like when we walk through the rubble and the mess of this shadowy time, there's a one thing that matters. And it's love. It's resurrection love. So we're all a little dimmed, right, because we can't show up in our Easter best. We're all a little dimmed because Easter dinner will look a little different today. Maybe you don't have enough toilet paper or Clorox wipes or milk or whatever else. Life is hard, but that's no bad thing, right? Because being connected by the saving power of love is the one thing that matters. So I want to do one of these deals right now where the, where the irritating preacher in the church tells you to turn to your neighbor and say something. So if you're at home sitting with somebody, I want you to turn to them and, and say what I'm about to tell you to say. If you're alone, I want you to say it into the screen and know that we're saying it back to you. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you're the one thing that matters. Do it now. Turn to Who are you with? You're the one thing that matters. Joe Hill, you're the one thing that matters. Jan, you're the one thing. John, you're the one thing. Emery, you're the one thing. Kristen, Gracie, Mary, you're the one thing. Friends, if you're alone at home right now, you say it to me. Say it to the screen, and I'll say it back to you. You're the one thing. You're God's beloved. God's one thing that he wants to salvage in the rubble. Somebody said, okay, put that on the street. Okay, I got you, I got you. I got you, Joe Hill. So when I was young, I was a Boy Scout. Some of you were Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. My troop went camping once a month in the North Georgia mountains. I was 12 years old on my very first backpacking trip. My mom and dad had bought me a brand new backpack with the metal frame, the whole bit from LLB. And I loaded up my brand new backpack with every last thing I, might, I thought I might possibly need for a night away from home. 
And that was a huge mistake. I loaded that backpack down so heavily in the end that about 10 minutes, about 10 minutes into the hike, I had to stop. Now I'm talking about the very beginning of the hike. I had to stop. I could see it in my mind's eye right now. I leaned up against a tree on the side of the trail. I gave my full weight to the tree, breathing heavily. I watched as the older boys kept going and disappeared around a bend in the trail up ahead. And I literally thought to myself, I'm going to die here. I've packed too much, I thought to myself, clearly, but it's actually rather a good thing because I'm going to die here. I'll have to live out my days right here under this tree because this pack is too heavy for me to carry another foot. Somehow I made it through that trip. And a few years later, my friends and I had a totally different approach to backpacking. It was the opposite from that first trip, we tried actually to take as little as possible. I got to the point where I didn't even want to carry a tent. I carried a very small, single-person hammock, weighed next to nothing, and a very small, perfectly-sized tarp, weighed next to nothing, and a very small backpack, super light. I was 14 years old when we went out for a weekend trip down Beach Bottom Trail in the Cahutta Wilderness. Again, packed super light. We camped at our usual spot in a low, flat place right above Jack's River, and I cruised all the way there. Like, I had nothing on my back. I had gotten my pack down to what I thought were the bare essentials. So we set up camp, and while the other boys sort of struggled with their tents, I set up my hammock and tarp and ate a good supper with all my friends there in the middle of the woods. And at nightfall, when darkness descended upon the forest, my buddies retired to their tents, and I bedded down in my hammock, swinging gently in the night air. I fell fast asleep, really, rather quickly. And then at 2 a.m., the loudest clap of thunder I have ever heard shook the earth like an earthquake and woke me up. I sat bolt upright in my hammock as lightning struck and lit up the woods like daytime for a split second. Do you know what I mean by that? Can you picture that in your mind's eye? Lightning strikes, and it's just like turning on the lights for a split second, and you can see everything all around you, 360, like it's daytime. So for just a second, I could see all the tents of my friends scattered around that low place in the woods. And I could see sheets, like sheer sheets of rain pouring down. And I could see on the ground in a split second, streams of water starting to run through our campsite underneath all the tents. It stopped my breathing for a second. And then I caught my breath and I realized, in the midst of all that storminess, I was perfectly dry up under my tarp and up off the ground in my head. Thunder and lightning struck again, and once again, just for a second, I could see all around me in the dark night. And it was a strange, it was, a, it was an unsettling feeling of sheer aloneness. When lightning lit up the woods, I could see bushes moving in the wind, or were they bears on the prow? I could see trees swaying, or were they men walking toward us in the storm? When lightning lit up the woods, do you know what I mean? For a split second, you can see everything, then the lights go out. I could hear rain roaring, or was it Children crying out in anguish. Your eyes begin to play tricks on you, right? So I was perfectly safe in truth and dry in the middle of an earth-rattling storm. But I was terrified. Why? Because I was all alone. The third time lightning lit up the night, I bailed. Totally bailed. I bolted out of my hammock into that shower of rain, and I ran for the tent of my best friend, Tim. 
I unzipped the door to Tim's tent and I dove inside with wild abandon. Now, Tim and I had been best friends since we were six years old. He was sound asleep in his tent. Tim had not packed lightly. He and his tent mate, a boy named George, had brought more stuff than you can imagine. And they had set up their tent and apparently had just dumped it all out of all the bags they brought into the tent. So I saw two boys sleeping there and then just a mound of junk in the middle of their tent. There was a river of water running in the front door and through their tent because these two guys had set their tent up in the absolute worst spot, the lowest part of the site, which was now literally like a creek bed. I said to Tim, I've got to sleep in here. He sort of barely moved. And he mumbled something that sounded to me like, okay. And I lay down between the two, between the two boys on the top of their mountain of stuff. And I lay on my back, so there was a big pile of stuff right under my back. So it was like I was in a mini bath bend laying there. And my head, when I put it down, was in a little stream of water running through the tent. It was so tight in there that my arms just barely touched their arms on either side of my body. The storm raged on outside. And after I got still in my back bend with my head in the water and just barely closed my eyes, Tim woke. He came just out of sleep, and his hand touched my hand, and he whispered to me, Hey, you good? You good? The storm raged noisily outside, and I could feel my heart beating in my chest. I could feel the heat of their bodies next to mine in the tent. I was soaking wet, totally uncomfortable. And I whispered back, Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And it was the truth. I was good. I was good because I had the one thing. Huh? In the midst of the rubble, I had the one thing. I was with a friend who had loved me for years and would love me for years to come. I was not alone. I had the one thing. I had love in the middle of the storm. And that, dear ones, is Easter. Love found alive, embodied in the middle of the storm. You see, I thought 14 year olds know everything, don't they? <laughs> I thought I had slimmed my backpack down to the essentials, to everything that I might need. I had a light load. I could walk easily down the trail. I had a place to sleep. It promised to be dry in the storm, but I cut too much. Didn't I? I left out the one thing I would really need. The one thing was the love embodied, that flesh and blood embodied in the presence of my friend. And when the lights went out and the earth shook, when the earthquake came, love rose for me. Do you hear that? Love rose for me, embodied, and asked the big question, you good? You good? We're together. You good? Yeah. So Tim and I stayed close for many, many years. We did all the good things and all the bad things that teenagers do. We did it all together thick, thick, thick. And then we lost touch, right? It happens. We lost touch for about the last 10 years, in truth. 
One afternoon last year, my sister Virginia called me on the telephone. Hmm? She cut right to it. She called him Timmy. Hmm? She said, Henry, Timmy died today. Died. Tim was 43 years old when he died. He died suddenly with no obvious cause. His heart just stopped. You know, that can happen. She said that Timmy died today and a storm of tears poured from my eyes and the light went in my, in my heart. The light in my heart went dark. And it felt like an earthquake in, in my body. And my mind raced through our childhood. We spent two decades together at least. And my mind raced through the whole span of our story. And I wondered, what does it all mean now? Now that he's dead, like, what does it all mean? And then I landed on that night. You ever do that? You ever run through the memories and then land on them? I landed on that night that I dove into this tent full of fear. And when I landed on that memory last year, on the day of his death, I heard his voice asking the big question. You good? And in an Easter instant, I remembered Deep in my bones, I remember that resurrection means one thing. It means that the one thing never dies. The one thing is love. And it never dies. And my friend Tim's love is one with the love of Jesus Christ. The ones you love who have died, their love is one with the love of Jesus Christ. And their love. In union, perfect union with the one thing, the love of God, is the one thing that matters. It's all any of us need. And so I answered his question. Huh? I answered his question through the earthquake of my own tears on the day he died. I answered the big question. Yeah. And the light in my heart flickered back to life. That, beloved, is resurrection. Life is hard, but that's no bad thing. Because we have the one thing, love. And it is alive on this Easter day. And it will never die. Christ is risen, dear ones. It is Easter. You are God's one thing. God's beloved love. Are you good? Say it with me. Yes. I'm good. We are all one for the other. The one thing. God's love embodied. That love will never die. Happy Easter. Amen. Turn in your prayer books to page 358. 
invite you to stand as you're able, and we will affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people today are form three found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Form 3, page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Edith, Margaret, Alan, Bill, Harry, and Sam, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another. Happy Easter, good morning, and welcome to worship at the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. So delighted to have each one of you with us, all in your separate little cells, as it were. A couple of things to <clears throat> draw your attention to. Our website continues to be a marvelous source of all the information about the current rhythm of life here at Good Shepherd. There is lots going on. Our Formation and fellowship opportunities continue via Zoom and a host of other online modalities. 
This morning, there will be no Christian formation for adults. However, Miss Catherine, our children and families minister, continues even today to offer lots of good stuff for our children and families. You can hit the children and families button on our website and see today's offering from Catherine. You can also see via the web a really beautiful video that Catherine and her son Lincoln our man Lincoln have offered to the church today, offering their beloved heart art project. Hope all of you have posted your arts on your door, door post today. If you haven't, there's still time in Easter Day and indeed Easter week. We'd love for you to send us pictures of your beloved heart artwork as it's posted on your door. And we'll come up with a way to present those pictures via the web. Also want to draw your attention to the music page on our website. Matt, Dr. Middleton and, and Emory have done a magnificent job of presenting music for Easter Day and on into Easter season on the website, and that will continue to be updated. You can see again the text for our final hymn, I hope, in the Facebook live stream that you're looking at right now when we get there. We do have our online offering plates up on the screen, and love to have you make your offering here. Again, thanks to all who have contributed to minister in the way of giving financial gifts to the church we so love, and thanks also to folks who have given an Easter offering. The Easter offerings are listed on the Joys page of our Joys and Sorrows section on the website. You can continue to give Easter offerings. I do want to let you know that the office will be closed tomorrow. We'll be back at it for the rest of the week. So now we're to our birthday and anniversary prayer, part of this good Easter service. We have a few birthdays this week. I have some listed here, and no doubt we've missed some, so there are probably some of you out there who have a birthday or an anniversary. So when I call the names of the folks I have, and, and you imagine them coming right here, right here, I want you to imagine yourself joining the crowd. So Sherry Owen has a birthday. Kaki Hester has had a birthday. Henry Tutt has had a birthday. Kevin Deep has a birthday in this time. Mark Medley, a birthday. I actually have a birthday this week. Ken Miller has his 90th birthday this week. And our beloved sister Joyce Leverett also has a wonderful birthday. I think it was yesterday. You can drive by Joyce's house on Sycamore and you can see the balloons that tell you how old she is. Lots to be proud of there for our dear one, Joyce. So all of them have come to join us here. Can you see them in your mind's eye? And there are others of you. Come join us now at this altar on your birthday. Two anniversaries that I'm aware of. Guy and Annie Huglitz celebrated their anniversary. And Ed and Jane Tipton are celebrating a wedding anniversary as well. There are others come into the space. We'll now pray the birthday prayer together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. May they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and neighbors. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good and gracious God, here are your sons and your daughters gathered in this, your church. May the love that has carried them this far in life fill them to overflowing on this day and carry them all the rest of the way on the very wings of your grace. And I ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. Now the Easter Eucharist. We are going to use Prayer D today. Prayer D is a really rich Eucharistic prayer. It's an ancient prayer and is particularly suited for these high festival feast days. So I'll turn you to Prayer D in just a moment, or you might find it in your prayer books there yourselves. Again, everybody in all of creation as welcome at this table, where we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, finding the Christ presence in the bread and the wine right here in our hands, taking it into our bodies, that we might then go out into the world 
and see the Christ presence in all creation. Happy Easter, dear ones. You are the one thing, God's beloved. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise. Eucharistic Prayer D is found on page 372. Page 372. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give you thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living in truth dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offered you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care. So that out of obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, we, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. Rising from the grave, he destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit. His own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. And when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. 
When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead. Proclaim his, his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance where the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and mar martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And finally, before the distribution, or as we distribute, the prayer for an act of spiritual communion. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though many among us cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through the risen Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
show of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Post-communion prayer is on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved friends, life is an Easter gift from God and life is short. Well, you see, we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the road with us. So may we be swift to love. May we be quick to laughter, to dancing, to helping, and to hope. And may we make haste to be kind. And indeed, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. We'll sing together hymn 207, stanzas 1, 2, 3, and 4.
Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.